Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about extending our uh, regression analysis to hypothesis testing. Now, recall that in um, the general idea here is that we have a trend that we're trying to estimate from our data, and there's some error involved. Um, because we're taking a sample of the overall uh, population data and not the, all the population that actually exists, uh, we're only going to get an estimate of the trend. We're only going to get an estimate of the residual error. Um, but our estimates, we want, we, we, we you know, if we're, we have enough data, if we have good data, if the correlation is strong enough, then we can get a reasonably good approximation to our results. And we want to do a hypothesis test to make sure that there is, in fact, a trend in our analysis. So, in um, regression, we're trying to predict that population relationship. And the typical hypothesis test that we do in regression can, especially in simple linear regression, can take one of two forms. Uh, and it can be, they're both equivalent to each other when you're doing simple linear regression, um, but we usually calculate them in one particular way. So the null hypothesis, H sub zero is typically given as something like um, the correlation rho is equal to zero and the alternative is that rho is not equal to zero. Now, rho, remember, is the population value for the correlation. Where R, little r in English, Latin letters, is the calculated value from the data, but that there is a population value behind that, a true correlation that is um, described with the Greek letter rho. Now, essentially, this is a two-tailed test where basically we don't care in this test whether the correlation is positive or negative, what we want is that it's not zero, that there is, we're trying to determine if there is a relationship of some sort. That is our main hypothesis test for regression. Now, we can certainly change this up and do a one-tailed test. Is it strictly positive? Is it strictly negative? But most of the time, we just want to know, is there a relationship? And we care less about the sign and things like that. Now, the alternative way that you will also see this hypothesis and actually more often expressed is that the null is that beta one is equal to zero. Remember beta one, again, beta is the Greek letter that corresponds to the, to the coefficients in our population equation. Um, in statistics, generally the intercept is B zero and the population corresponding population value is beta sub zero. And then the slope coefficient is beta sub one in the population and B sub, B sub one in the calculated regression line. So here we're saying that our null hypothesis is that the slope coefficient is zero. And the alternative is that beta sub one is not equal to zero. And again, this is a two-tailed test by default. We're just trying to see if there, the slope is not zero. Again, remember, if there's no correlation, then the regression line has no sign and therefore it has a zero slope. And so these two tests are actually equivalent to each other. If there's the regression line has no slope, then there's no relationship. It's not positive or negative. Um, and the same thing for the correlation. If there's no, there's no correlation, the slope is zero. If the slope is zero, there is no correlation. Uh, again, these are not completely interchangeable, um, but we're imposing a linear model on the data. And so in that context, they are equivalent. Okay, so again, typically we, we test this um, as a, a slope, calculation. Uh, and that's typically how this is expressed. Although, as I said, in, in single linear regression, these are equivalent. Now, there is also a sort of extension of this, which is sometimes called the model test, 
which again, does not differ in the single linear regression case, but can differ in the analysis of we have more than one variable. But the general idea for the model test is that the null hypothesis is that all the uh, slope coefficients in the model are zero. And then the alternative is that at least one slope coefficient is not zero. Um, you may you may find this be very similar to an ANOVA test where we said all the means are equal and then at least one mean is not equal. That that is, is essentially equivalent to an ANOVA test. Um, if all the coefficients are equal to zero, then they are all equal to each other, certainly. Uh, um, again, this, these are referring to the slope coefficients. The, uh, we're gonna use the data analysis tool pack to do this analysis, and it will automatically do a, a model test automatically. We will see in the one variable case that the coefficient, that the p-values for those two tests, even though they're calculated differently, actually turn out to be the same uh, p-value, uh, the same level of significance that we'll, we'll deal with. Now, if there's more than one coefficient, then that, that symmetry breaks. But in the one variable case that we're looking at, this is what we're, we're, we're testing. OK, so now remember that we have to set, set our significance level in advance. Um, I am going to set it to be the standard 0 0.05, just for simplicity. All right, now. What we're going to do then, again, using the data analysis tool pack to do all of our calculations for us, we're going to conduct a regression analysis. And we're going to use the same procedures that we used for um, calculating with um, calculating the regression coefficients and the correlation coefficients. The information that we need to conduct our hypothesis tests are also in that output. And again, I'm for the sake of this calculation, I'm not going to include any of the graphs because they are not directly relevant to this calculation. Uh, if you're doing a complete regression analysis, you would include all of these things because you do actually want to know about all of the other stuff. Um, now, if you are conducting a regression test where you have you want to set your co your constant to zero, you can check that here. Uh, usually you don't do that on the first go round. You only do that if you have to reject that hypothesis, which we'll come back to. And then the confidence level, you don't need this for this example. We will talk about this when we talk about confidence intervals on the coefficients in another video. Okay, so we have our, our variables. Our label button is checked because I highlighted the first row. And let's see the output. All right, now again, this is the similar output that we have seen in previous examples that gives us our correlation values. It gives us our, con our coefficient values, our correlation, all of that stuff. What we're gonna focus on in this particular example is these values that I'm highlighting here in yellow. And I'm gonna put the two that are actually equal to each other in red text, just so that they highlight for us. Now, these are the two p-values that we wanna look at in order to calculate our, uh, uh, in order to interpret our hypothesis test. Now, this one right here, the significance F, this is our ANOVA test. This is the model test. And we, again, and we interpret this p-value as saying, this is the probability that if I assume that all of this, the coefficients, particularly the slope coefficient here, is equal to zero, what is the probability that I can accidentally get a value this large based on that assumption that it's actually zero? And this is a very, very small p-value. It is much, much, much less than 0.05. So what that tells us is that our slope coefficient is in fact not zero. We would reject our null 
because this is much smaller than 0 0.05. That is the same p-value we have here. Now, again, this p-value is calculated from treating the, the regression data and the residual data as an ANOVA test and getting this calculation. This, the p-value here is calculated from doing a test statistic, a t-test statistic. Um, we're treating our assumption as zero for the null. The mean that we've calculated for our slope is we're guessing it's 1.38. And we divide that um, 1.38 minus zero divided by the standard error for the slope coefficient, which again, it's calculated, there's a formula for it, uh, which is nasty, but uh, there's a formula for it you can look up in a statistics manual. And when you calculate that, you get a test statistic of 37.6, which is really big, which is why our p-value is really super small. But this p-value and this p-value are going to always be the same in a simple linear regression equation. Again, this p-value is less than 0.05, much less than 0.05. And that means that we reject the null hypothesis that our slope is zero, and we conclude that in fact, the slope is not equal to zero. There is sufficient evidence to make that conclusion. Now that is the standard regression hypothesis that you normally do. You can also do a regression hypothesis on the intercept. H zero would be that beta zero is equal to zero and H A would be that beta zero is not equal to zero. Again, that's the default assumption. Is the intercept, does it belong in the equation or not is essentially what we're saying. And again, this p-value is very small. It will not match these other ones because it's a different test, but it's calculated very similarly. We assume that if it's zero, then we calculate a test statistic using the difference between zero and the value that we got. We divide it by the standard error. Again, there's a calculation for the standard error for the intercept. And then when we do that division, we end up with this test statistic, which again is much bigger than two or three, which is normally borderline. And so this is a very small p-value again, it is much less than 0 0.05. And so we would conclude that in fact, this uh, P this intercept is not zero. If this p-value were very big, what we could do is we could go back to our data analysis tool pack and we could check that constant is zero button, that checkbox, and then it would remove the intercept from our equation and give us an equation where the intercept was forced to be zero. But th this is our hypothesis testing on our our slopes on our, our model. And again, this is equivalent to doing the test on um, the correlation value. And again, the correlation value is really close to one. So we would expect that we would handily reject the null hypothesis. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna go back through these steps again, and I want to use some of the simulated data that I created from the same, actually this was created from the same uh, from the same um, regression uh, population line, but with much larger errors that we saw in the, the correlation and scatter plot video. And so I put it on a different sheet here. This is the one that had the highest error, if you recall. And again, this is the one where we had like a, if I remember correctly, like a 0.2 correlation. And so I'm just gonna run my um, data analysis tool pack analysis on this data, just so that we can see a difference. Now, I'm gonna have to change the, um, the highlighted values because there were I had more data in my simulations um, than in some of my other um, in the last example I did, I think we had only 25 observations and not 70 of them. Um, I highlighted the labels. I'm, I'm not gonna worry about this right now. Um, 
I'm going to put my output right there. And then we're not going to worry about those things for right now. Now let's look at what happened with our data. So this was our correlation that was 0.2. When you square that, you get only 0.04. So only 4%, 4.5% of the variability is being explained by the relationship with X. So that, that error is huge compared to the, the trend available. Now notice our significance level here. Highlight it, put it in red, and our p-value here, put it in red. What this is telling us, essentially, remember this, we're comparing normally to a significance level of 0.05. This is saying that our significance level is higher than 0.05. So that means we would fail to reject the null hypothesis in this case. There is not enough of a trend here. The trend is not strong enough um, at the 0.05 level for us to conclude that there is in fact a trend. Now, if we had more data, more than 70 observations, more than six, more than 70 observations, if we had um, a maybe a slightly smaller error, then we could get this under 0.05. If we maybe had originally set our significance level to 0.1 because we wanted to catch a trend, um, then we would we would be able to reject the null that there is no relationship and say, yeah, there is a relationship. It's not very strong, but it's there. But in, if we if we go with the 0.05, which is this the normal way that we we do the significance level, unless we have reason to change it. Um, this is higher than the significance level. That's saying that we do not really have good reason to think that there is in fact a trend in this relationship. It's not very strong. And that again, that's because the size of the error is very large relative to the size of the, the, ch the change in the trend. And so we would reject the null hypothesis here. We would say this basically, we will get a, a, as good a, a measure of this Y value from just taking the average Y value than we would by using the linear regression to model the value. Now, the p-value for the constant is below 0.05 and the slope is not. And so our model would basically just be the constant and the constant, if you take the slope out of the equation is just the average y-value. Uh, so that, that is what happens when, when it fails. That's what it means. So significance tests, the p-value comes straight out of the data analysis tool pack. Uh, and then all you have to do is compare that significance level to 0.05. And you can remove the intercept if the p-value is too high. If, if these roles were reversed, we would keep x and we would eliminate the constant. And then we would go back in that um, data analysis tool pack and we would pull out, we would check that box for that constant intercept. So if we go back into the data analysis tool, again, I'm gonna just pull it up. We would check this box. If this p-value proved to be bigger than 0.05, we would redo the analysis, but we would check this box the second time around. Now there's still a little bit more that we can do with this output. And so I wanna come back and I wanna look at that again in the next video on confidence intervals.